Yesterday I did the whole breaking news thing and then like two hours later Nikon rumors leaked the full photos and specs for the Nikon Z8 and it's really important. It'll help people like plan their purchasing decisions. So I do want to cover it but I don't want to put the jacket on and like do the whole glasses thing. So I'm just going to cover it really quickly but I'm going to compare those specs against the Nikon Z9, the Nikon D850, the Z7 Mark II, the A7R5, and the R5. These come from NikonRumors.com, SonyAlphaRumors.com, and MirrorlessRumors.com. Thanks to follow those blogs. They have lots of good information. And of course, thanks to our sponsor, Adorama. You can visit sdp.io slash Adorama. When you buy camera gear, please support a member of the actual community, not just some big box store. Go to sdp.io slash Adorama. And not only are you keeping a camera store thriving, but you're, you're helping to support us and unbiased reviews. So thank you very much. First, here is a photo of the Nikon Z8. And I'm very happy to see this photo because my worst fears were that they were going to put it in the Nikon Z7 II body, which were what the rumors are, but this is actually a bit of a sturdier body. And I, I'm really happy to see it. I wanted it to be a little bit bigger because that is part of the magic of the D850. Like the D850 is big, but it balances so well with big telephoto lenses. And th this is the best feeling camera I've ever held. Here's a rear shot of the viewfinder compared to the bigger Z9. And we can see the layout is going to be identical. So if you have a Z9, the Z8 would be a great second body. Like your fingers won't have to relearn too much, though maybe they moved the delete key. Here are all the specs that are identical to the Nikon Z9. It has the same 45 megapixel sensor and they're saying it's stacked. And what that means is it's a very fast readout. That means you do not get any rolling shutter. And if I'm losing you, I have an entire video on rolling shutter that'll explain exactly what that is. It's bad, but the Z9 sensor is very good. It's very fast. The ISO range is basically the same, 64 to 25,600. The, the lower ISO 64 is different than most cameras that have a base ISO of 100. And since the D850, this has given us cleaner images, just very slightly cleaner under ideal circumstances when you're using the base ISO, like in the studio. But it was enough that the D850 was our camera of choice when that was new. It'll shoot 20 frames per second raw or 120 frames per second JPEG. And those can be silent because this is all with an electronic shutter. And that means it's, it's better than most of the competition. I'll, I'll compare it side by side in a second. And it's better really than anything except the Sony Alpha 1, which can do 50 megapixels at 30 frames per second raw. It has no mechanical shutter, which is a letdown to me. I was hoping they would give it a mechanical shutter because I shoot in a studio with strobes often and I like to use the fastest possible shutter speed that helps me kill the ambient light. It just gives you better control over the light. It means you can shoot outside in brighter conditions with faster apertures before you have to switch to high speed sync and high speed sync kills your batteries faster. So something like the Sony Alpha 1 has a sync speed of 1 400th of a second. The Z9 and probably the Z8 will have a sync speed of one two hundredths of a second, which is actually very kind of slow and primitive. The maximum shutter speed is one thirty two thousandths of a second, which is outrageously fast. You'll probably never need that. It would take crazy amounts of light to possibly illuminate a subject very well. And it has 493 autofocus points, which is the same as the Z9. It just means there's full coverage of autofocus points all around it. Like the Z9, it shoots at 8K 60 frames per second. And because there's no asterisk next to that, it's not saying there's an improvement. I suspect it's also limited to Nikon's version of the raw files, which means it will take some special processing or you have to use, I think it's DaVinci Resolve that supports it. And I recall my Final Cut does not support it. Videos like this, nobody cares if it's in 8K. In fact, nobody cares if it's in 4K. HD is just fine. But I would like to use 8K60 for wildlife video because here you end up doing a lot of cropping and it can be difficult to track a moving subject around the frame. So being able to like crop even to HD or vertical and then reframe as a subject moves around is really powerful for wildlife video specifically. The tilt screen, it seems exactly the same as the Z9, 3.2 inches, and the electronic viewfinder is the same. And that's another big disappointment because some of the rumors had said it was going to have a 9 million dot viewfinder, which is what the competition has, like the A1, the A7R5. The viewfinder is pretty low res at 3.69. M dots. And, and does that matter? It doesn't matter to everybody. It doesn't matter to me when I'm taking portraits or travel or landscapes. Um, but when I've been using the Z9 to shoot eagles, 
and Osprey. And when you're looking at a small subject, it, it starts to look really pixelated. And for me, wildlife photography is about the enjoyment of the overall experience. And my favorite camera is still the D850 because it has an optical viewfinder, perfect. But short of that, for mirrorless cameras, something like the A1 has a, almost three times the resolution and it ends up looking much sharper and it is a much more enjoyable experience for small subjects in the screen. Here's everything that is different between the Z8 and the Z9. First, the size. You can see the Z9 is, is pretty hulking and the Z8 is significantly smaller. Also, the Z8 has a CF Express type B card and an SD card. So there are asymmetrical cards, whereas the Z9 has two CF Express type B cards. What this means is that on the Z9, you can shoot raw to both cards, and there's not going to be any difference in performance over shooting just to one card. If you shoot raw to both cards in the Nikon Z8, the slower SD card will become the bottleneck, and that means your buffer will fill up faster and you're shooting action, you will have to wait longer for it to unload before you can begin to reshoot, and that's going to be important to sports and wildlife photographers. What I do to address this is I shoot RAW to the CF Express card, I shoot JPEG to the SD card because the JPEGs are smaller and thus they're less likely to bottleneck and that's a decent compromise, but it's not a complete backup. If you lose your CF Express Type B card, you can't pull a full quality backup from the SD card. But usually the JPEGs are fine, except in the case of wildlife again. So the Z9 is still gonna be a superior wildlife camera because you will not be bottlenecked on the SD card but the weight differences for the Z8 might make up for that because it seems to like it's going to be less than a kilogram, so it's going to be significantly lighter. And I never liked traveling with the Z9. It not only did the big format not fit in my bag properly, but uh, it, it was heavy to carry around. I don't like to have a, a vertical grip camera on a strap. The price, actually higher than I hoped. They're saying it's going to be 4,600 euro or about $5,000 and that's more than the competition. The price is so close to the Z9, it's almost like they're just re-releasing the Z9. I was hoping there were going to be some more improvements, and maybe there will be, and we just don't know them yet, but it seems like Nikon is just basically saying, here's the same camera again, we reduced the form factor and we dropped a few hundred dollars off of the price. So let's compare the Z7 II to the Nikon Z8. Here you can see the size difference. The Z8, again, probably feels better. It's a little bit bigger. The Z7 Mark II is $2,600. And again, I think that's a really good price for portraits, travel, landscapes. This is now the camera I would recommend. Nikon has more lenses out. Uh, so go to that sdp.io link and pick one up from our sponsor, Adorama. Um, they both have basically the same number of megapixels. Your pictures will generally look the same, but the biggest difference is the Nikon Z7 Mark II has terrible rolling shutter. So if you are panning or if you are shooting a fast-moving subject, something like a hummingbird, you will see lots of distortion. The Z8's faster readout will basically eliminate that. So that is one of several reasons why the Z8 is going to be better for sports and action than the Z7 II. Z7 II, travel landscapes, portraits, but any sort of action or wildlife I would upgrade to the Z8. We found the Z7 II has unsatisfactory performance with telephoto lenses, so I don't recommend it for sports, but the Z8 is pretty good. It should have the same autofocus system as the Z9, which has improved greatly over the course of its life. They've released several firmware updates and it's now capable. It's not class leading. The A1 still outperforms it, but it's good. And in some ways, I think it might even be better than the Canon R5 is. The Z7 II will do 4K 60 uh, full width, but the video autofocus on it, I, I find unsatisfactory. I wouldn't recommend it. The video autofocus on the Z8, well, first it'll go to 8K 60, but the video autofocus is also better. It's not great. I, I don't record with the Z9. I find it to be a little unreliable. So instead, I either use Canon or, or Sony video cameras like I am right now. The Z7 II will do 10 frames per second RAW or JPEG, whereas the Z8 will do 20 frames per second RAW or 120 frames per second JPEG. The Z7 Mark II's viewfinder is even worse than the Z8 with only 2 million dots, and that actually feels kind of cheap and low res, whereas the Z8 is, is, has almost twice the resolution. So if you're upgrading from a Z7 Mark II, that higher quality viewfinder might be a good reason to upgrade. Now let's compare the D850 this big DSLR to the Z8. 
the D850 is $2,800, which I think is a good price. I wouldn't feel bad about somebody buying this, though you might head to KEH and pick up a used copy. They both have 45 megapixels, but the D850 has a really loud shutter. And I noticed that with wildlife, it was frustrating. I would get close to a bird and then I would often get just one shot. I would fire the shot and then clank and it would scare the bird away. So the Z8, the Z9, they have mirrorless cameras. They don't have to make noise. They can be completely silent and that's really powerful. For landscape shooters, the D850 can actually be a little bit better because it's a DSLR. It does not have to have autofocus points on the sensor. We find in extreme conditions when we're covering lots of dynamic range, you can see some banding caused by those autofocus points. Those autofocus points will often reflect light when shooting into the sun, things like sunrises and sunsets. And for those reasons, the D850, despite its bulk, is still really the best choice for image quality. It has the best image quality in the world because it's a DSLR and it has off-sensor autofocus points. The D850 has amazing 3D tracking that we absolutely loved, but the Z8 has subject tracking. So the Z8 can find the eye and focus on it. Whereas with the D850, you'd have to put the autofocus point on the person's eye and then you could recompose with 3D tracking. The Z8 will even detect, you know, cars and animals and such. It's pretty sophisticated and it really can help you uh, just speed up your workflow. But still the 3D tracking on the D850 generally gets the job done. The D850's video capabilities are really very outdated. It's only 4K 30, though that's full width and the video autofocus on it is essentially unusable. Uh, you basically have to manually focus with it. The D850 does seven frames per second, or if you use the vertical grip like you should for wildlife, it does nine frames per second. But now with the vertical grip, it's also significantly heavier. The Z8 will do 20 frames per second raw, so significantly faster or 120 frames per second JPEG. And because it's a DSLR, the D850 has an optical viewfinder, which is so beautiful to use for wildlife because you're just looking through a telescope and you have perfect resolution, whereas the Z8 has a pretty low resolution viewfinder. Now let's compare the Z8 to the Sony a7R5, Sony's high megapixel camera. Sony a7R5 has some more megapixels at 60 instead of 45, but in, in practice, you don't necessarily see any that difference in your images. You'd have to be really careful to see any differences. The a7R5 is very good for video. The autofocus on it is essentially flawless. It will do videos like this with shallow depth of field where it tracks your eye and never have a problem, but it's only 4K 60 full width. That's plenty for most things, but I, the 8K 60, as I discussed, is really nice for wildlife, but the Nikon video autofocus doesn't match Sony's. The a7R5 has a flip forward screen. So you could film yourself in a scenario like this, whereas the D850 has only a tilting screen, it's not as versatile for hybrid shooters. The a7R5 for sports and action though is pretty inferior in that it only shoots at 10 frames per second, either RAW or JPEG. The Z8 doing 20 frames per second, that, that is so much more powerful for things like birds in flight. When you get twice as many shots, uh, so much happens within a single second that if at 20 frames per second, the images aren't the same. They're all wildly different when a bird is flapping its wings or pulling fish out of the water or something. Uh, 60 frames per second, 100 frames per second. These would not be too many frames per second. So to get twice as many frames per second is a huge, huge advantage. So for sports and wildlife shooters, the Nikon Z8 is clearly superior to the a7R5. The a7R5 has two CF Express Type A cards that double as SD card slots, so you could choose either type of media and you do not have bottlenecks, whereas the Z8 has asymmetric card slots. So if you did want to run a constant backup, then you would be limited in performance by the performance of the SD card. So there it's a close one for the a7R5. The a7R5 has an absolutely gorgeous, huge nine million dot electronic viewfinder that I find a pleasure to use. It's almost better than real life, whereas the Z8 has a lower resolution viewfinder that's still good enough for most things. And our last comparison, the Canon R5 to the Nikon Z8. You can see the R5 is a little bit smaller, but still it feels good in the hand. I, I like the handling of the R5. They have the same number of megapixels, but the R5, like the Z7 II, has a slow readout sensor, so you would get rolling shutter, making it inferior to use the electronic shutter for action. With the electronic shutter, it will shoot 20 frames per second RAW or JPEG, but again, that's with rolling shutter, whereas the Z8's faster readout speed means you would not get rolling shutter. The R5 is an excellent video camera doing full width 4K 60, but it tends to overheat, but the autofocus is really good. 
The Z8, on the other hand, again, 8K60. For those hybrid shooters, the R5 does have a screen that will flip forward. They both have asymmetric card slots, CF Express Type B and SD. Um, but the R5 has a higher resolution viewfinder, not as good as the Sony a7R5, but better than the Nikon Z8. If you have follow-up questions or if I got something wrong, please write a comment down below. And again, please help support Adorama because that helps to support what we do here. Uh, you know, we're just a mom and pop shop. So anytime you're buying any sort of camera gear or the new Mavic, head to sdp.io slash Adorama and that lets them know that you heard about it from us. Thanks and bye.